This is Aero Farah's Aero 3 Mini PC. So I've reviewed the cheaper and more lower powered Aero 2. Now the Aero 2 model has the Gemini Lake in it. This steps up that performance to a Core i5. It is a 10th gen one. It is the 10210U. Now that has four cores, eight threads, maximum turbo of 4.2 gigahertz, and it's paired up with eight gigabytes of RAM. You can add another stick of eight if you wanted to double your capacity and then run dual channel. 256 gigabyte SSD. It has Intel's wireless AX201 chip in this, so that's Wi-Fi 6, very, very fast. Gigabit LANs on here, Gigabit LAN port, two HDMIs, and it does also have plenty of USB ports and a micro SD card reader. Inside the box of the Aero 3, we have a user manual. This is a support card, HDMI cable, power supply. This is an EU plug, and this one is 60 watts. We have some screws for the 2.5 inch drive. The Visa mounting bracket, yes, that is included. Very few mini PCs actually include this in the box. Looking now at the build and design of the Aero 3. So here we have Gigabit LAN, two USB 3s, and two HDMIs, which support 4K 30 only, which is a big mistake here. I would have loved to have seen 4K 60. Really, we do need that, so then the desktop would be nice and smooth at 30. It is very choppy. Power in right here. So this is all alloy around the outside. We have an exit vent right here and a SD, micro SD card reader. Now, it's a little hard to get the micro SD cards in and out of this slot I have found with that one. So the hot air is then blowing out that back and it comes in right here in the vent. You can just see right in there the BIOS battery. So the front of this, we do have the power button 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, another three USB 3s, two Type A's and one Type C, and this is a reset there for our BIOS. If you mess up any of those settings, then you can reset the whole mini PC without having to unplug that battery from within it. And then on the bottom of it, we have the two mounting points there for that Visa bracket that I showed you that we do get in the box. And if you want to get into the internals of this one, you need to remove these little rubber pads here that act as feet, but behind them there is a screw. The back part is what slides out, so you just pull it out like so, and then we have access to the fan for cleaning if you wanted to do some maintenance to this. You look right inside there, you can see that they have used copper. That copper goes right through to the end with the fins inside here and two transfer, thermal transfer pipes there too that they have and a rather large fan. Now this fan doesn't make a lot of noise, but you do hear it when it steps up into the higher RPMs, trying to cool this down once you really push it very hard. So that is the battery right there for the BIOS, but we've got that reset switch that I mentioned. Flipping it over now, you can see where we put the 2.5 inch drive, so you do have to undo these screws here all around if you want to change or swap out our SATA 3 drive, which is right here, and the RAM. So we've got one SODIUM that's in this DDR4 spec, eight gigabytes. You can add another eight to give us then dual channels. At the moment, out of the box, it's only a single channel configuration with our memory, and that does mean we are missing out on some performance benefits of better memory bandwidth if it was dual channel. You can see right inside there, all of those fins there for the cooler, and this is our wireless card, which is sadly part of the motherboard. We cannot swap over or upgrade or change our wireless in this. Now, if you're looking to add more RAM to this, you do have to remove the SATA 3 brace, the bracket inside in order to gain access because this blocks it off and I could not get the RAM out. So that's the RAM that they have used, this brand I have not heard of before but it is using Micron chips and it should be perfectly fine this RAM. So what I will do is now add a second SODIUM DDR4 stick into this. So I will run this with the RAM in dual channel just so we can see the maximum performance this mini PC is able to achieve. Just before I get into Windows, the BIOS, so this is completely unlocked to us. That's why they have the reset button on the outside that if you mess up any of these settings, you don't have to open it up. You can just simply press that and reset and go back to the user defaults. So a lot of things can be changed in here. We can tweak the power limits and whatnot. They can all be changed and you can push it a little bit higher, but be careful about those thermals if you decide to do that. Now, overclocking feature is not actually overclocking as I mentioned in my other videos, but we can undervolt 
with this. You can also do it with XTU. Now, I will not be undervolting or changing any of those settings. It's all going to be stock default. The only thing I have is added that extra sticker RAM to get dual channel to give you the best performance specs and figures right now with this. So when you first turn it on, it does have a lot of pre-installed language packs here, as you can see. So you don't need to download them and then install them because they are already part of the Windows 10 image. So looking here, it is running Windows 10 Pro. Now this is a digital activated license that they have with this and it does seem legit, no problems at all with that. So I was expecting that it would probably come with Windows 10 Home, so that is a pleasant surprise to see that. So that SATA 3 SSD that's in there, this is the speed of it. It's not exactly the best I've seen, it's okay. Now if you did want fast, I highly recommend that you put something like a Samsung 960, 970 Evo in this NVMe drive, which it does support. So you can run the faster speeds then, and that'll be like about three, four, five times faster than this. And of course you can increase the capacity. You can add another 2.5 inch drive if you wanted some slower storage that is, like a spindle or a SATA 3 with that. So this chipset that is in here is the Core i5 10th gen. It is the 10210U. Now this is either configured from the manufacturers to have a power limit of 15 watts, or you can configure it with the TDP up. This is the power limit up to 25 watts. So I checked this out with HW Info, and out of the box it is configured to have the 25 watts. Now of course you can use something like Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. You can tweak this, you could increase the power limit but the fan noise will be definitely a lot louder and the thermals will get a bit higher. So I'm going to keep everything stock for this review. The only change I've done is just added another stick of RAM to make sure it is in dual channel, which of course it does support. Now maximum RAM speed is 2,666 megahertz with that. And I'll just show you one other thing here that is in the device manager. And of course, um, right here, you'll see that it does have the wireless six card which is the AX201. This is an excellent Wi-Fi card. So even though we can't replace it or upgrade it, this is extremely quick. So you can get over two gigabits depending on your router. And I'm getting about 1.4, 1.3 with my router, which isn't the fastest out there. And then our HDMI port. So when we took a look at this, I did point out and say that both of those ports, they are only HDMI 1.4a spec. So that means 4K 30 Hertz only. So with my LG CX here that I have, it will not go any higher than 30 hertz, which is a real shame. I would like at least to see 60 hertz, which this chipset supports, but the ports that they have used, the hardware, simply doesn't, which is a real shame. General day-to-day -day performance of this mini PC, very, very quick. Everything pops up and loads in very fast, documents, YouTube, things like that. I won't really test that out too much, but here are some spreadsheets. There's no lag, editing this is perfectly fine. It has a good turbo, the four cores, the eight threads, that is why everything is very, very quick and snappy with this one. So what about video playback? This right here is a 10, sorry, 10 bit, yes, HEVC and 140 megabits per second. Loads in fine, no real slowdown. And this is a Sony demo here, which is 4K 60, which it also plays just flawlessly. No drop frames there, no drop frames in YouTube either. So performance is great. What about some synthetic benchmarks? So this is the night raid score recommended for integrated graphics. It's all right, it is definitely lagging behind the Iris Pro 655 graphics. This one has the 24 executional cores. And this is our Geekbench 5 score. So single core score here is good, thanks to the 4.2 gigahertz turbo it has. Multi-core score, that's all right, because it has the four cores and the eight threads. Here it is compared to the 8259U, which gets a lower single core score, slightly better multi-core score there, as you can see. And our Cinebench score, so this one is nearing up, well, over 1400 points here, which is okay for, again, the spec of this mini PC. This is only about 51, well, 51 points below the 8259U, that's a 28 watt processor. You have to remember that this one's 15 watts. On to 4K video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro. So this timeline is a little laggy. I have noticed that sometimes there's quite a big delay. Right now it doesn't seem to be too bad. So yes, you can edit 4K video, but as I always say, these are basic edits, okay? So I'm not color grading, I'm not doing any fancy transitions or anything like that, very, very basic, like my reviews are. And that will be fine. So I'll test out now the export time. So this will be with the 4K YouTube pre preset. 
and I will time that as well. We'll see how long it is going to take for one minute of footage to be exported. And it is starting to finish up right now. So once this bar disappears, I shall hit pause here. There we go. So take away one second, about one minute and 13 seconds for one minute of footage is good. That's not bad at all. In fact, that's better than the new Redmi Book Pro 14 that I'm testing. That one with the MX450 NVIDIA took almost three minutes, I think it was, to fully export. Something was up with that anyway, as you'll see in the full review of that particular laptop model. But this is good. One minute, 14 seconds, I think is good for the hardware. On to thermals now. So sadly, it is triggering thermal throttling. You can see there, yes, and 91 degrees Celsius. That is what it is getting up to. So it does get a little bit warm. It peaks at that, but that was only when I was gaming that it will really get up to that. When you push it really, really hard, to constant benchmarks or gaming, then you will see this happen. So what about power use? At idle, it is approximately seven to eight watts peak. It peaked at 68 watts from my wall meter, from the wall socket. And Chrome use, just with uh, five tabs open, 14 to 15 watts. And the fan noise. So when it gets up to the high RPMs, when you're really pushing it hard, it is a little loud. Now, it sounds very similar to an Ultrabook. After all, it's an Ultrabook chip that's in this. And even the cooler looks like something very similar you'd find in an Ultrabook. And here's a sample of it at 100%. Onto gaming performance now. So my typical tester of GTA, this is on the low settings, 50 frames per second. And it's actually doing all right. 720p though, I wouldn't run this at 1080p because it is going to then dip under 30 frames per second. So you can see right now that we are looking at around mid 30s here with the frame rate. And it's playable. If you wanted to play a little bit of this on the side and you don't mind having the low settings and just running it in HD, then it's gonna be perfectly fine. But what I'll do now, is also check out a little bit of Counter-Strike. We'll see how that one performs. So I have this one set to 1080p and I think I probably should have put it onto maybe 720p. You can see the frame rate down the bottom right hand side, which is only around mid kind of 60s at best into the 50s right now. And for some reason I cannot shoot. The trigger is not working with my mouse, but when I go to click going through different players with a preview, that works for some reason, which is really, really, Weird. No, I, okay, we, I can shoot, but I really have to hammer my mouse. I don't know what's going on there. Need to hold that down. Oh, he got me. He got me, definitely. I did not see him. And I pushed my mouse button again, and it failed to work. Look at how he completely got, got me there. Okay, so not ideal performance. It dips down and gets into the low 30s there. So with this game, you really want to be 60 frames per second at least minimum. Finally, Linux support, so not a problem at all with the Aero 3 here, everything fired up just fine, it supports the wireless Bluetooth, audio, that is also too working, and no problems, it does feel very, very quick and snappy running on this hardware. Okay, so a little recap here, the things I like about this mini PC, so I do like the size of it, it's a good compact size, I like the fact that it has the Visa mount included in the box, so many manufacturers now are not including that. You have to hunt around and try and find where you can get a mounting bracket for it. So you can put it on the back of a TV or monitor. It's got plenty of ports on it. So all the USB ports, micro SD card support as well. Although it's a little tricky getting that micro SD card in and out. I wouldn't want to be doing that all of the time. It's very fiddly. You need really long nails for it for that one. So it is actively cooled of course. So there's a fan, there's a little bit of fan noise. And that sample I showed you was at 100% when it ramps up. So it can be just minor irritating kind of noise that comes through from, from this mini PC. Performance wise, for all your light computing, which is what these are designed at, you're not gonna be playing triple A games, you're not gonna be doing super complex video edits and things like that, with CAD work or something with a mini PC like this, but for documents, general computing, video playback performance, very, very good performance. It just feels very quick and snappy for that. It does take a bit to bog this down. Now the RAM is sadly configured only in single channel because the stick is just in one of the slots and you're going to need to get another RAM stick, another SODIMM, and install that if you want the dual channel RAM performance, which is what I showed you. So gaming as expected for the Intel UHD graphics, it's nothing wonderful. So you can play older titles like say Skyrim or you can play light engines like Counter-Strike or League of Legends, just lower the resolution, lower down the settings to get a more acceptable, more playable frame rate with that. 
So it has Windows 10 Pro on this, which I didn't expect. I thought it might have been Windows 10 Home, and it is a valid digital license, so that's a positive there. And you can upgrade and change over the SSD. If you wanted faster, it's only SATA 3, so if you wanted NVMe speeds, then you could buy yourself a faster drive to put in this. So all up, it is an okay mini PC, but it falls short in a few areas, like the HDMI 2. So HDMI, it does not have HDMI 2.0 spec, so 4K60, it is HDMI 1.0. Four. That's a bit disappointing there too. And I feel it's a little pricey considering the spec of it, what is on offer there. Now it does have the fast wireless 6 chip, so that is good to see. Some manufacturers are still using older, say the 7000 series of the Intel chips. But the AX200 and one very quick with the Bluetooth 5 support, so that is good to see there. So you can't even upgrade it. Linux as well with my little test, runs great very fast on this. So there you go. You know now the full story of the Aero 3 here. Thank you so much for watching my in-depth review of it.